So what is going on everyone, Fernando Silva here with another video and today we're going to be going over iPadOS 14.6 Beta 2. Been using it for the last 48 hours, I want to show you guys what's new with it and then how my battery performance and then overall performance has been on iPadOS. And again, we're getting closer to iPadOS 15 so I guess 14.6 Beta 2 probably won't have too much but let's find out exactly what's going on. So we get right into this aspect of the video, this file size was about 350 to 400 megabytes. So give yourself at least 800 to maybe a gigabyte of space to update this, right? And what that tells us is that with a beta 2 software, and it's not that big, that means we're not going to see too many new features, right? So if I go into the about section, we're on 14.6. If I bring this up and show you, we're on 18F5055B. Remember, when we first started with iPadOS 14.5 beta 1, the file size was a a lot bigger and then also the name of the file actually started I think with K or F. We were much higher in the alphabet which meant that we were going to have a lot more iterations. So with this one we're already on beta 2 and they're giving us a B that means we're probably going to get beta 3 which is A and then the final RC edition so the release candidate and then it'll get finalized and released to everybody. So we're not going to have you know eight different betas this time around at least I don't think so especially with iPadOS 15 coming right around the corner. So the first update, which is actually kind of nice, is that now if you go into your software update, so the next time that I can update a beta 3, it's now going to let me download and install this via cellular. So I don't need to be on Wi-Fi anymore. I can, if I have enough data, if it thinks I have enough data, and if I have over 50% battery, it'll download it and it'll install it via cellular, which is nice. And it's been added to a lot more countries, which is beautiful. So you do not need to rely on Wi-Fi if you want to update, whether you're on the beta or if you're just on the regular consumer version of iPadOS, which is amazing. Another thing that was added, which Apple's been teasing for a while. So if I go in here, if we look for the podcast app, Apple's been teasing this subscription service. So you're allowed to subscribe to podcasts, which means you can follow them. Probably they probably have a paid version, so you can so you can directly pay the podcast and subscribe to their channel through podcast, which is nice. So you can kind of give back to the creator and let them choose how much they want to charge and things like that. For right now, it's not available. So one thing that they added, which wasn't there before, was this manage subscription tab right here. So if I click on here, as of right now, it just takes you to your regular subscriptions on iTunes. So these are some of the things that I'm subscribed to. But in the future, you're going to be able to manage your podcast subscriptions from here. So you're probably going to be able to just click on a podcast, subscribe to it, pick the plan that you want, and then it'll just go on here. So that way you can manage them and decide like, hey, I've been paying for this one for six months. I'm not liking it. Or, hey, I've been paying for this one for six months. I want to renew for another six months. So it's just a good way to manage your subscriptions from here. But again, it's a nice little teaser and foreshadowing that Apple is actually bringing that to podcasts. The next one is a pretty cool feature within Maps. So I'm again, I don't use Maps. I usually use Google Maps for what I want to do. So this actually works, I think, all over the country. It started in California and now it's moved up to Seattle. Don't quote me if it's throughout the entire country, but I think right now it's on the West Coast. So what you can do now is if I want to go from, let's say, from here, directions, and let's say from San Francisco, we can route that, and now there's a bike option. So if I click on the bike option, it gives you a bunch of information. So A, you can route your map. It gives you different bike paths. It gives you the elevation as well. So if you see this little graph right here, it shows you, you know, how many feet you're climbing. So all of them are 600 feet, but some of them are a little bit harder towards the end versus a little harder in the beginning. And then it also lets you avoid hills and avoid busy roads. So if you want to avoid all hills, avoid all busy roads, you can do that as well. But again, a nice little bike path feature, which I think is cool to add for anybody that's an avid, you know, biker. And it makes sense that it's in the San Francisco area because a lot of people use their bikes there. But overall, a great new feature. And obviously this comes to not only iPadOS, but iOS 14.6 beta 2. Another one that was included that finally came back. So with 14.5, Apple was teasing and showing off the new privacy feature, right? So under tracking, this was showing up. You had this tab, but when you clicked on the tracking tab, this was all grayed out, which is kind of unfortunate because a lot of people wanted that, especially early on. And we thought that 14.5 was going to be that. But again, with 14.6, it seems to be working. So you can allow apps to request for tracking. You can disallow and it's all right there. So I always keep it on because I want to know what apps are tracking me, what kind of data I'm doing. So basically bringing the data and the power and the data of power and money back to the consumer. So I love that Apple's doing that. If people are pissed about that, then let those people be pissed about it because I like how I can now pick and choose what is being tracked and how often it's being tracked. And then another thing which I didn't know was new, but I guess it is, if you go into the Find My app, if you guys have AirTags, which I do have one, if you go under the Find My tab, when you set up an AirTag, apparently you couldn't put an emoji on there before. So if I go into my items, you can see that I have a little dog emoji for Archie because that's where I put the AirTag. I put it on his collar on the follow paw, which is an awesome collar. I'll link it below if you guys want to try it out. I got a review coming out really soon. 
But again, now you can add emojis for custom icons. So if you wanna, when you set up an air tag and you scroll all the way to the bottom to create a custom name, you can now add a custom icon or an emoji or emoji of whatever you want. So this one just made sense for me because it's my pup and we're tracking him at all times and he's with me. So that's awesome. And again, this doesn't have the U1 chip, so the directions are a little bit different. It's gonna make you go through Google Maps or Apple Maps. But that's pretty much gonna do it for what's new. And now what I wanna check out is actually the overall performance. So if we go to battery, I always like to check battery performance, see how we're doing. So the last 24 hours, we're at four hours and 22 minutes and 12 minutes of screen off time. And again, mostly through Safari, a little bit of NBA 2K as you can see, 40%, took up two hours and six minutes. What's interesting is that I was on Safari for an hour and 20 minutes and it took up more battery than NBA 2K. And then again, now you can see Find My is using some background activity. So keep that in mind if you guys are using Find My on a daily and regular basis. But if you go to the last 10 days, you can see we're averaging four and a half hours of screen on time, 20 minutes of screen off, screen off time. So overall it's getting a little bit better. Again, I'm not getting that promised 10 to 12 hours of battery life that you get with a brand new device, which I'm hoping the new M1 iPad Pros will give me at least in the beginning. But hey, for a three-year-old device, four hours and 32 minutes of screen on time ain't bad. And again, I don't follow best practices with battery. You know, I'm on the beta programs, which usually hurts battery. I always have it plugged into the magic keyboard. I always have the display on, I never turn it off. So overall, I've done some improvements to try to get it a little bit better and it's been working because I was down to like three and a half, a little less than four hours. So getting a nice half hour of screen on time is awesome. So that is how we're doing from a performance standpoint, but everything is still very responsive. You can see quit out of a bunch of stuff. Everything works perfectly and you can see that, you know, I've been gaming a lot on it too and it's still handling that on a three-year-old device with four gigs of RAM, 256 gigabytes of storage. So keep that in mind. But that's going to do it for this view. Let's go to the normal view. Don't forget to check out channel sponsor Paperlike, always keeping us protected, anti-glare. And again, I'm selling this iPad, so my resale value is going to be probably a lot higher because I'm not going to have any scratches or erosion or anything bad from the Apple Pencil on the main iPad screen. But again, let's get out of this view onto the new one. So as we saw, there weren't too many new features. Again, we did get some tangible stuff at least. So being able to update over cellular, having those new mapping routes for bikers with the elevation and different bike routes and bike paths. So that's all really cool. But again, there's small features and they're not game changing features, right? So again, 14.6 is probably gonna be the last iteration of 14.x that we're gonna get before iPadOS 15 beta one. And I'm so excited to get that probably June 7th to June 12th around that time. Usually they release it either on the day of WWDC or like that following Tuesday to at least the Apple developers. So definitely stay tuned, stay subscribed because we're gonna be going over everything that iPadOS 15 has, has to offer. And it better be a lot because with those new M1 iPad Pros, I'm expecting a lot of software updates. And then also I wanna see how the new iPadOS software plays with older devices, right? What if you don't have the M1 processor, right? If you're, what if you still have an A12X or what if you still have an, the OG iPad Pro from 2015? you know, that big behemoth 12.9 one, right? So I kind of want to see how that software kind of plays with older devices. And if it's going to be something special with the new M1 iPad Pros that the older ones can't do with that new software. So again, definitely stay subscribed, stay tuned, because we're going to be reviewing every single aspect of iPad OS 15 as it begins to roll out. But that's pretty much going to do it for this video. Don't forget to check out channel sponsor Paperlike. If you guys are trading in your iPad Pro or trying to resell your iPad Pro, the number one resale value is that screen. That's the way that you communicate and interact with the iPad. So make sure it's protected with Paperlike, especially if you guys use Apple Pencils to take notes or to design or to draw. But again, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Until next time, leave a comment below. Did you guys update?